Well, hello everybody, and I'm at Hazelmere Motorcycles again, and today we have a very special bike, the GSX R Thousand R. This is the top of the line special uh, from Suzuki. Variable valve timing and all sorts. It's very fly spattered where some people have been having fun with it already. Now traction control mode, get that down to it. There's 10 settings on this of course, isn't there? Let's go down to, and there's off. Well, that's a no, we'll, we'll have two. Uh, right. This will have the easy start system, so one press. Save me 0.2 of a second holding the button down. This does have the uh, Yoshi exhaust on it, so it should sound pretty good. <laughs> right then. Now my review of this bike is not going to be about its peak performances, it's going to be about what is it like as a, a bike to just ride around on. Because as much as you will like it for all of its high-end abilities, you will have to ride it normally more times than the other. So that's going to be the angle of this review. But I will be uh, experiencing some of its perks. Now I have reviewed the GSX R1000, the standard. Video link is here. The few key differences of the double R are is uh, variable valve timing, which is a mechanical system, uh, better front suspension, better electronics package, launch control, uh, all quick shifter, auto blipper, so you can both up and down shift without using the clutch, which I will try out. You can look into it a lot more, uh, find out every single little bit of detail and every little key tiny difference. But the variable valve timing, the suspension, and the other toys for the track are the main differences, and there's electronics. Uh, right. Flip a neck, this is quick. Uh, now, oh, let me try and get back to the normal review. I am 6 for 4 as you know, and uh, it's not too bad. It is a sports bike, so it's it's got that feel to it, but it's not as cramped up as, as some other bikes that I've uh, tried of this style. Oh my god, it's... I've, oh, Auto blipper. So smooth! And it's it's not jerky, it's not jumpy in the low RPMs, even in first. This is really comfortable to ride around. <laughs> it's incredibly light feeling. Solid, planted, quick steering, but not skittish. I've ridden some some proper track bikes that were just daylight MOTs on them and they are nearly always very very fine sort of clutch control very jumpy uncomfortable and this thing will probably spank 
all of them and yet still be comfy. The quick shifter works perfectly even at the bottom of the RPM range, which I know is a flaw of a lot of quick shifters, they don't like shifting low down. Not a problem for this. So nicely balanced. It's a bit difficult to compare this to the thousand because I'll be honest, it was a few weeks back, and I'm not sure that I'd, I'd have to try them side by side. I mean, this is the, pro the problem is that you couldn't really use all of the thousand, the single R, on the road. So you know, I don't know <laughs> what the real difference is, but this is quicker. This is definitely quicker. when you just let off and get back on it it doesn't jolt now this bike is quite expensive it is 16 grand however compared to like the uh, some of the other competitors of their sort of you know their high-end flagship special bike it's quite a few thousand cheaper which means you could buy this and get an exhaust system and do with other few bits to it and still probably have a little bit of money left in your pocket effortless cornering, like it's just so planted and so solid. See look at that! Unbelievably smooth downshift with the auto blipper. The engine's got this unique clicking to it which must be the variable valve time and you're going You could lose your license on this very easily. Having said that, the same could be said for the thousand. So this is not what this review is about. We're supposed to be seeing what it's like as, an, as a slower, comfier. What's it like? Yes, it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. It's comfy. It's great. The brakes are insane. It's it's amazing the ride on it, considering it's a. It's been designed for track use. It's lovely on the road. These are bumpy roads and it's it's more comfortable than my XJ6 probably because it's, it's not bouncing as much. But there is no jar to it really at all. It's, it's fantastically good suspension. And it's really nice to ride at normal speeds. I don't know what it is. It's, I think it's because it's a little bit smoother and just a little bit more tame low down it's like a Jekyll and Hyde situation you know one minute it's comfortable and it's soft and you're enjoying it and, and everything's great and then, and then the next minute it's like I want to kill you again I cannot underestimate how much I'm short shifting this thing I am not going to be that silly on it I, I have my levels Okay, so, dash turns on, a little bit more fancy than the thousands. Uh, usual controls are there, you know, horn indicators, blah, blah, blah. The, the adjusting the traction control is, you see, it goes through from off, otherwise known as death, um, to 10, otherwise known as no life. Sound the same, but very different. Uh, different modes, I'm not going to play with those. Start, stop switch and the uh, hazards and that's basically it there's not a million buttons and switches uh, everything's done with that you have all the information that you'd have on on most bikes you know sort of your trip and and how many miles you got left and your mpg and stuff like that. I mean, 47 mpg really really um qs for quick shifter etc etc traction control lights you know abs blah 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 but then you've got the adjustments for the suspension now. If I, sorry if I pronounced this wrong, shower. Um, adjustments on the top, and then also you've got your adjustments down here. As you can see, that is a very nice set of forks. Some nice big Brembos. Uh, lovely blue rims. It looks nice. Oh, the other thing, the other thing. On this one, is it's got the little, the little eyebrows. 
it is, does make it look very cool. Rear sets and levers are the same as the normal thousand. Um, it's not a lot of other differences. What's in here? Yep, space for nothing. Personally, I think it looks lovely, and I actually prefer it in the black than I do in the blue. The blue's a really nice colour, but in, in a few years' time, might not look so good. This just looks good. It doesn't look mean, though. That's one thing. It doesn't look like... Grrr. It's more like, I'm quick, but I'm pretty at the same time. It's the little headlight. Nothing too aggressive about it. It looks very sleek, you know. Nice thin tail, the light mounted underneath. Well, you will notice there's an RMG tail tidy on it. Normally they would have the donkey, um, what I call them, uh, tail extender to put the plate behind the rear wheel. But look how much better that is. And with the exhaust. Need to find somewhere a bit prettier to get some, uh, some good shots of it for well, the beginning of the video, really. <laughs> I just can't get over how good this quick shifter is. I mean, even at low RPMs. It's perfect. And downshifts. Just get off the throttle. I haven't really talked about the clutch much on this because I haven't really used it much, but it is, it's light, but it's got a, a, enough weight to it. So, mud. <laughs> Am I going to find anywhere to, to get some pictures of this bike? This is, this is not what I was looking for. It's, it's a typical me video this is, you know. Gets given the uh, Jigsaw 1000 double R and, and takes it down the narrowest country road. But it's dealing with it. Great. No complaints. No, no harder to ride than, than any normal bike. I do not see any flaws for its, you know, its massive pros on like the track. It's really pleasant to use. The only, the only thing is that it is stupidly fast. God, that sounds good. That's very pretty. But to answer the question of, is this a bike that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis? Could you commute on it? Would it be comfortable? Which, totally. And that is the wonderful thing about a variable valve timing, uh, or VVT. Uh, I believe they're even calling it SRVVT, which is Suzuki Racing VVT, because it's supposed to be the same variable valve timing that's on a MotoGP bike. If you don't know what variable valve timing is, basically, as the engine progresses through the revs, it adjusts the timing of the valves to give more power and more push as you go. The rear sets aren't too low, even for someone as tall as me. I, I feel like I fit on this bike. I mean, it, the seat is so long that I can get further back if I needed to, but I don't need to. I can comfortably sit up at the tank. Now, I know this may not be the fast and rip-roaring view that you might want to see, but this is very important to be realistic. If you go and spend 16 grand on a bike, you want to know whether if you ride it around normally, if you're going to hate it. And I can happily tell you that you won't. If you want to know what it's like as a track bike, how fast it really can go, what the cornering's like, like the full-on, full-speed cornering, etc. All of these things, there are other people who can give you those answers, but they generally don't give you the answers, which are, yeah, but what's it like going to the shops? But this is the reality of England. Nice twisty roads, ruined by a lot of traffic. It's also keeping fantastically cool. It's at 86 degrees. Celsius. If if I was on my bike doing this right now, it would be a hundred. Finally.
<laughs> Feels amazing. Wonderful bike. I mean, yeah, it's 16 grand. It, it should be a good bike. But it does feel a bit special compared to some of the other bikes that I've ridden out there. You know, you really feel that this is something special. People are saying they're good, people are absolutely loving them, and I can see exactly why. And even I'm someone who prefers smaller engine bikes. What I will say though is this does feel far more usable on the road. Because it's got that low down grunt, because of the variable valve timing, it's fun, it's good, it's still quick and it's still got plenty of torque low down to really, you know, get you through the corners and through the little country roads, not going stupidly quick, but then when it, you, you want to go faster, it suddenly sort of converts itself into a lunatic. So there we go. Huge thanks to Hazeman Motorcycles. Um, you know, I feel very lucky that I get to ride all these different bikes, but that one is a real special one and just so nice. Just nice. And a complete lunatic. So it's a bit of both. <laughs> Anyway, don't forget to like the video. Uh, I have an entire playlist of uh, bike reviews that I've done. Subscribe to the channel, and if you feel like supporting the channel, you can look in the description. There's a few ways you can help there. Thank you very much for watching, and again, thanks for having me on motorcycles. I'll catch you next time.